Namaste, my friends, and welcome back to the Law of One series. My name is Aaron Abke, and today's episode is one that I've been preparing for quite some time, as the subject matter of this episode requires a lot of research and study. Because one of the most mysterious concepts put forward in the Law of One is that of the double body, also called the dual activated body. And there's not a whole lot of passages where Ra discusses this phenomenon in the Law of One, which leaves a lot of room for speculation. However, I've had a personal theory of what this phenomenon is that I finally feel very confident about presenting publicly today. So please join me for this 20th episode of the Law of One series as we explore the theoretical framework for Kundalini activation as the dual activated body. So I'm going to cut right to the chase from the beginning and make the claim that what I believe Ra is talking about with this concept of the dual activated body is what we know as Kundalini awakening. More specifically, Ra is talking about people who are born with awakened Kundalinis. And so what that means is that this is also a theory that the Kundalini life force energy that we know lies waiting in potential at the base of the spine is in fact the fourth density body or the green ray body awaiting to be activated through spiritual effort. And I'm going to be presenting you with evidence for why I think this is the case. But I also want to give the caveat that this is not directly stated by Ra in the Law of One. So this is just my personal theory as a Law of One student and researcher. And the second caveat is that we're not going to be getting too much into the science of a Kundalini awakening or the practices for doing so in this episode, as I'm going to be reserving all of that material for my Spiritual Intelligence series. In this episode, we're going to be focusing solely on this theory itself. So I want to begin by recapping what this concept of a dual activated body is in the Law of One material. So Ra states that there are some entities on our planet right now who are born with a dual activated body, which means a yellow ray body and a green ray body in activation simultaneously. And souls who are born with this double body are in a unique position of having just been harvested from third density in their last lifetime, who have chosen to spend their first fourth density incarnation on a planet that's currently transitioning or being harvested from third to fourth density, which is precisely the case for our planet right now. Ra also goes on to say that this condition is reserved exclusively for souls who've just graduated from third density with a very high percentage of positive polarization, meaning those who just barely graduated with a 51 or 52% service to others orientation would not qualify for this. But only those souls who've just graduated with a 70 to 80% positive polarization. So you could think of it like the valedictorians of their graduating class, those who graduated with a GPA above 4.0. It is a very rare and unique condition reserved for advanced souls who have two primary objectives, to begin their fourth density learning and to help out a struggling third density planet in the transition of harvest. And Ra goes on to state that these souls who are allowed to incarnate with their fourth density energy already in activation gives them the ability to remember fourth density understandings naturally such as oneness, spiritual evolution, and reincarnation. These are understandings that are not available to third density souls due to the veil of forgetting. So a third density soul has to learn these ideas, where a double activated body inherently knows them. One example of a person born with a double body would be Jesus, who was said to have been instructing priests and rabbis at the age of 12 who were amazed at his level of wisdom. And Don also asks Ra if children and people who possess rare psychic abilities naturally, such as telekinesis, are in these dual activated bodies, to which Ra confirms. 
Now, as we know, one of the guiding principles that Ra abides by, all throughout the Law of One, is to never give information about something unless they are asked. Even to the point that Ra sometimes will hint to Don that he is sort of sniffing around a really important area that might deliver some powerful information, but Ra can't tell Don what questions he should ask due to the law of confusion or free will. So Don has to figure out what questions to ask all on his own. So with that understanding in mind, we can see that Don never asks Ra if one can activate the green ray body during an incarnation and achieve the dual activated state through spiritual effort. He only asks Ra about those who are born with this condition. But because the Law of One states that the universe bends towards evolution and progression, and that the Creator makes all things with equal opportunity, my intuition tells me that this green ray energy can be awakened through spiritual effort, even if one isn't born with it. And that is where our connection to Kundalini begins. We know that people in the Hindu tradition at least have been practicing Kundalini activation for no less than 5,000 years. Because we find these pictures and wall sculptures of Shiva sitting in the lotus position in ecstasy with serpents rising all around him. And if you're not familiar with what Kundalini awakening is, in the Hindu tradition of Siddha and Kundalini Yoga, they call it the serpent power because they teach that there's this dormant spiritual energy lying in potential at the base of the spine. And when one is aware of it and begins the necessary practices to purify one's mind and nervous system or energy centers, one can actually awaken this serpent power and raise it up to the crown chakra much like a serpent lying coiled and rising up when it's provoked. Now, each experience of a Kundalini awakening is very unique in and of itself. But the classic example we all know of is when that dormant serpent power surges up the spine like a lightning bolt and pierces through all of the chakras and through the crown chakra, causing one to shake and convulse on the floor in cosmic bliss and God union. And this is also what Ra refers to as opening the gateway to intelligent infinity. Interestingly, Ra says this can also be done on the negative polarity through the solar plexus chakra alone. However, this is extraordinarily difficult and rare for someone to do. But contrary to most people's understanding of a Kundalini awakening, it is not a one-time event. It must be continually awakened from its sleeping state and taken up the energy centers, beginning with the heart, and then up to the throat, and then to the third eye, and then finally to the crown, where one has to learn how to integrate that energy and allow it to reside there permanently. That is when one possesses the extraordinary psychic abilities, creative genius, and astounding spiritual intelligence. Or, in other words, one literally becomes a fourth density being living in a third density body. The word Kundalini in Sanskrit literally means that which is coiled. And in Hinduism, Kundalini is also referred to as Shakti, who is the goddess of the divine feminine principle. And it is said that she lies within the body at the root chakra in a sleeping state, waiting to be awakened by her divine masculine counterpart, Shiva, at the third eye position. So when one awakens this dormant kundalini force, you are literally reuniting Shakti with Shiva, husband and wife, or divine feminine with divine masculine. And kundalini masters such as Gopi Krishna have described the awakened presence of kundalini as being under the influence of a drug or intoxicant in the sense that when someone's on molly or ecstasy, let's say, they cannot not be loving and happy. In the same way, when one is under the influence of the awakened serpent power, one cannot not be loving. And so, Kundalini awakening gives you something that I like to call goddess 
awareness. The awareness of perfect oneness of all of creation and the alive, vibrating kundalini life force that permeates all things. The Vedas and Upanishads teach that Shakti, who is the divine feminine principle, is pure energy who creates the entire known universe and pervades all forms in the cosmos. And the divine masculine principle of Shiva is pure consciousness, that which is aware of the manifestation of energy in the universe. So when one has awakened this kundalini force in the body, one becomes aware of the oneness of all energy in the universe and knows themselves to be that very energy. Things that one once used to see as dead now shine forth with tremendous aliveness. It is as if one can sense the energy within a rock or a leaf, as if they are breathing. This is Goddess Awareness. It is as if one becomes aware of the soul of the universe, which has always been there. But with the much lower third density energy, one was simply not able to perceive it. So let's look at a few quotes and parallels now from the raw material so that we can begin to see that the dual activated body and the kundalini activated body are truly one and the same thing. Now one of the well-known fears of a kundalini awakening is that on rare occasions when it happens too soon or on accident, it can be an incredibly painful experience that's very disorienting and leaves one in a mild state of psychosis for weeks or even months afterwards. And this happens when the mind and the nervous system have not been properly prepared for this level of energy. And so the different spiritual imbalances that exist can be deeply exaggerated through this energy. And so this happens when there's too many distortions in the chakras that essentially causes one to blow the circuit board of the energy centers. And this leaves the mind-body complex in a state of disarray. And Ra seems to hint at this fact in session 63 when they say, This transitional body is one which will be, shall we say, able to appreciate fourth density vibratory complexes as the in-streaming increases without the accompanying disruption of the third density body. If a third density entity were, shall we say, electrically aware of fourth density in full, the third density electrical fields would fail due to incompatibility. In session 49, Ra makes this point even more directly. As an entity grows more polarized, this locus will move upwards. This phenomenon has been called by your peoples, the Kundalini. However, it may be better thought of as the meeting place of cosmic and inner vibratory understanding. To attempt to raise the locus of this meeting without realizing the metaphysical principles of magnetism upon which this depends is to invite great imbalance. Now, some of you who are more knowledgeable about the Law of One might be thinking, but Aaron, if you activate your fourth density body in a third density lifetime, shouldn't you live to be 90,000 years old? Isn't that what Ra says is the average lifespan of a fourth density body? And interestingly enough, Ra actually addresses this very question in session 63, where they say, the third and fourth combination density's body will die according to the necessity of third density mind-body-spirit complex distortions. So in essence, because it is a dual activated body, and not a solely green ray body, the green ray energy very well may increase the health and the lifespan and the radiance of the third density body, as all the Yoga Upanishads claim that it does, but it is still ultimately limited by the yellow ray vehicle and the yellow ray energy field of the Earth itself. As our planet enters more into the fourth density, these activations will become more and more common and easier to accomplish than in centuries past. However, if you're afraid that your nervous system might not be ready for such intense activation, you have no need to worry. Because through practices like Kriya Yoga, this energy can be awakened slowly and gradually 
and can be spread out across many years or even decades of one's life. But if one is especially eager for this awakening to occur, it can be accomplished in less than a year sometimes through practices like Hatha Yoga and Kundalini Yoga. It all depends on the karmic potential of each individual. So as you begin to awaken this fourth density energy and raise it up towards the crown chakra, you will begin to experience all of the qualities of fourth density consciousness naturally and effortlessly, such as the all-forgiving love of the Creator, the awareness of oneness, a passion for service to others, and a radiant inner joy that never runs dry. I've often said in this series that fourth density consciousness is synonymous with Christ consciousness because Christ was a fourth density being incarnate. And just as Christ said to the woman at the well in John chapter 4, whoever believes in me, or whoever activates me within themselves, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water, springing up into everlasting life. So in the spirit of cross comparing, I want to read a quote for you from a book called The Play of Consciousness by Swami Muktananda, who describes his experience of a Kundalini awakening. When your inner Kundalini Shakti unfolds, her love will flow all through your body, through all the 720 million nadis. Her rapture will spread through every particle of blood, as a result of which you will experience bliss in every pore. Then your desire for the joy of touch will be satisfied and your world filled with sweetness, bliss, and love. A divine and unparalleled joy rises up in waves from within. The whole of creation, even the most ordinary things, seem to him so beautiful and full of love that he feels as if he has been reborn in a new world, as if celestial beauty, delight, and pleasure have incarnated in the mortal world. Realizing how joyous and sweet life is, the Sadaka becomes overwhelmed with ecstasy. Love springs forth from his heart, and compassion surges for all creatures. Sounds like a perfect description of fourth density consciousness, doesn't it? So again, there's so much more we could cover on this topic as we're just barely scratching the surface in this video. And like I said, in coming episodes on my Spiritual Intelligence series, we're going to talk in great detail about the science and the metaphysics of this inner transformation. But for now, what we can say is that through cross-comparing the Yoga Upanishads and other Hindu texts with the Law of One, it seems remarkably clear to me that what we have historically called on our planet, the Kundalini, is in fact the green ray body, lying in potential and waiting to be activated through spiritual effort. And the good news is that the Law of One also provides the roadmap for these efforts as well. Ra states that the transition from third to fourth density will take anywhere between 100 to 700 years, depending on the speed of man's evolution. And so we who are alive today can set this precedent for future generations and accelerate the timeline towards the new earth. Just as all the Kundalini and Kriya Yoga masters have said, that one who awakens their Kundalini during a human lifetime has spared themselves hundreds of human births because this is in fact the highest achievement of a human lifetime and the great evolutionary leap of mankind. So I'd like to leave you, as always, with one final quote from Ra, where Ra seems to highlight this fact in session 49. We have two types of energy. We are attempting then, as entities in any true color of this octave, to move the meeting place of inner and outer natures further and further along, or upward, along the energy centers. Meanwhile, the Creator lies within, in the North Pole, the crown is already upon the head, and the entity is potentially a god. This energy is brought into being 
by the humble and trusting acceptance of this energy through meditation and contemplation of the self and of the Creator. Where these energies meet is where the serpent will have achieved its height. When this uncoiled energy approaches universal love and radiant being, the entity is in a state whereby the harvestability of the entity comes nigh. Hey everyone, thank you for watching today's video. I hope that you were truly blessed by it. And I wanted to let you know that I'm really excited to now be partnering with an amazing conscious supplement company called Organifi. A lot of you know that I'm also passionate about holistic health and nutrition. And Organifi has been a staple in my daily health routine for a very long time. They make the most delicious, organic, and high quality superfood products that I've ever come across. And as you know, a healthy body is a great benefit for spiritual growth because the health of your body directly translates to the health of your mind. Everything is connected. So feeding your body with high vibrational superfoods straight from the earth is one of the best ways to create that environment for a healthy mind. But getting all the superfoods that your body needs in one day can admittedly be a little bit tough. And that is where Organifi can add a ton of value to your life. I personally start every day off with green, which is Organifi's really delicious blend of 11 superfoods like ashwagandha, chlorella, and moringa. And then in the middle of the day, I'll usually have a scoop of red, which is a delicious energy blend full of 13 adaptogens and antioxidants from berries to recharge your mind and body with a delicious blend of organic superfoods. Your body is an amazing organic machine but it needs the right fuel and signals to function at its best. And red is full of adaptogens sourced from organic herbs and medicinal mushrooms. And these are compounds that balance hormones, prime your energy pathways, and alleviate stress. So instead of crushing your adrenal system with huge doses of caffeine every day, adaptogens work with your body and give you natural, sustained energy all throughout the day. What's most important to me though about Organifi is the way that they go above and beyond to ensure the cleanest and purest ingredients in all of their products. They are USDA certified organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, certified glyphosate free, and absolutely zero fillers. So I never go anywhere without Organifi and I never miss a day without taking it. And Organifi is offering a super generous discount of 20% off of your entire order when you use the coupon code ABKEY at checkout. So if you wanna upgrade your health regimen with Organifi, you can click on the link in the description box below to learn more about all the amazing products that they offer. And I promise you that your mind and your body are gonna thank you for it.